Recently, we've been featuring Ben, aka the most exhausting player in our match play content, and there's been thousands of comments over the last several videos all about Ben's play. Some of the comments have been really negative and controversial. Most of the comments have been super positive, and people are appreciating it. People are especially hearing about Ben's mindset and his mental toughness, his tactics. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about why I think he wins so much. And there's no spoilers here. This video is not about any particular match. It's not about any particular outcome. It's just kind of general, some thoughts that I have after scanning through and reading and replying to literally thousands of comments about Ben's match play over the last couple of days. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And the first thing I'm going to address, uh, I've addressed in videos before, and I, th I just think it's so important and it, it connects to everything else we're going to be talking about today. If you're a tennis player and you're competitive and you want to win more, what we're going to talk about today is unbelievably important. And a big part of this is perspective. It's how you view the game of tennis. It's what you value and don't value. And if what you value is the W, if what you value is winning more than you lose, then the mindset stuff in this lesson right now is unbelievably important. So. One kind of theme that we've seen with Ben, he's been featured on the internet for, for I think about a year now. And one of the most common negative comments when, when there is negative stuff around Ben's match play is, is this whole response of, oh, he's not a four or five. I've seen over and over again in the comments, this is 3-0 tennis, this isn't four or five uh, tennis. Here's the thing, I, I, just, I wish I could just say this one time and just have it permeate throughout the internet and never have to repeat this again. But unfortunately, that's not possible. And so I feel the need to come back to this again. A computer rating, which is what we're talking about with Ben, computer rating means that it's based on actual competition. It's based on actual results. It's not somebody like looking at the charts. I know what's on the chart, the NTRP chart, like the different attributes and types of shots and how you win points and how you lose points, so on and so forth. If you just look at the chart and guesstimate where you are, that's not a real rating. That's not a very accurate way of doing things. The only way to have a true rating is to play against other rated players. And the, then the computer, based on its fancy algorithm, spits out where you should fall based on who you win against and who you lose against. And that's all that matters. When you play tennis, a computer rating is only based on one thing and that's winning. So if you think Ben is a 3-0 player, you're just objectively wrong. Like, you're, you're just wrong. <laughs> like, his, his rating is 4-5. He plays 4-5 tennis, and over the last two seasons, he's 11-1. He's won 11 matches at 4-5, and he's lost one match at 4-5. He's a 4-5 player. If watching him play tennis and reading that he's a 4-5 makes you uncomfortable, or you feel like, ah, this, this, that's not right, like there's no way that's accurate, you need to do a little bit of reflection and possibly record yourself so you can see the reality of what your own game looks like. Because the problem is not with 4-5. or five. The problem is with what you're viewing in the way that you perceive ben, Ben's game. The problem's on your end. It's not on our end saying he's a 4-5. or five. So I, I just want to want to get that out of the way first, and you'll see how this connects in, in just a second. So 4 or 5 is an actual computer uh, rating for Ben. This brings me around to a quote that I love from an amazing coach, good friend of mine, Jorge Capistani. Uh, he owns TennisDrills.net. And I heard him say this in a conference, in an instructional conference. I just love this quote. It's much easier to make your opponent play poorly than it is to make yourself play great. So one more time for emphasis. Please, you should write this down. You should memorize this. It's much easier to make your opponent play poorly than it is to make yourself play great. Well, let's unpack this and talk about it a little bit. If you, on any given day when you go play tennis, if you want to play great and have a fantastic day on the tennis court, there's a lot of different boxes that have to be checked for you to play your best tennis. If you want to play to your full potential, and I don't care who you are, what level you are, how long you've been playing, if you're a professional player, or an amateur player, or you're a beginner, or an advanced player, these are all things that have to basically be in line for you to play your best tennis. 
The timing has to be good that day. You've got to have good rhythm and feel for the ball going back and forth. The height has to be more or less kind of what you want it. The speed of the ball has to be somewhere comfortable. If the height is way outside your comfort zone, you're not going to play great tennis. If the speed is way outside your comfort zone, if it's way slower than you like or it's way faster than you like, you're not going to play a great tennis. Spin, if somebody hits way more slice than you like or way more top spin than you like, you're not going to have a great day. The match tempo, uh, we're seeing Ben kind of deal with this a little bit in the match with, with Topher. If things are moving much slower than you like or much faster than you like, you're not going to play great tennis. How about the mental game? Sometimes there's things happening outside of the tennis court in our personal life, in our career, our relationships, and if that's totally out of whack, it's going to be really hard to play great tennis. How about the conditions? The court surface you're playing on, the weather, the crowd watching, the noise around the court, the wind, the sun. You can't control any of those things. If some of those things are completely different than what you like, it's very difficult to play great tennis. So if you want to have a great day of tennis, basically all of these things have to be in line. And if any one of these things, much less two or three or four of them, are not where you'd like them to be, then it's really difficult to have a good day on the courts. You agree? Like in general, you kind of you understand where I'm coming from? And this isn't like an exhaustive list. These are the first eight things that, that came to mind for me. If these aren't all getting checked off, then playing to your potential and playing your best tennis is going to be very, very difficult. To make matters more complicated, tennis players, especially if you're watching this video right now and you're a tennis player, you probably tend to be rather analytical. Uh, you probably are a little bit of either a gear nerd or a technique nerd. You kind of like nerding out on, and I, I'm, a, I'm a technique nerd. Like, just I'll, I'll raise my hand. I'm not trying to like talk down to anybody. Like, I, I love deconstructing swing mechanics and technique and doing analysis. And so like, I, I, I fall on that, that list. Like, I'm in that category. And most of the people watching this video fall into that category as well. And if you do, then you may have one or more or maybe all of these things running through your head at the same time. The things we looked at a second ago, these are all kind of like conditions and uh, different elements related to how the ball is traveling back and forth, your opponent's style. That's going to kind of determine all these things. The, the things going on around you in your personal life, the conditions, you know, so on and so forth. These are all specifics relative to your game and maybe what you're working on right now. Pronation on your serve, wrist lag, and, you know, like lag and snap on your forehand, using your kinetic chain appropriately, having the right swing path on your kick serve, finally using your split step correctly at the right time and doing it consistently, having a good racket drop, back scratch position on your, your serve, trying to hit heavy spin on your forehand or backhand to make it curve, using an appropriate you know, unit turn and setting up your swing correctly. Here's the thing. If you have all of these things going on in your head, in addition to having all of these things potentially not being checked off, what do you think the chances are of playing great tennis against any particular opponent? If you're thinking about all, the, all this stuff and all those other things might not be in line, the chances of playing to your potential on any given day are, frankly, unbelievably low. Now, I'm not trying to like be a buzzkill. I'm not trying to be pessimistic. Uh, I'm not trying to tell you that like you're never going to have a good day of tennis. I'm just trying to give a little bit of perspective here. Hopefully you hear where I'm coming from. A lot of players watching this channel right now are really obsessed with this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, do these things lead to making your opponent uncomfortable? Remember the quote a minute ago, it's much easier to make your opponent play poorly than it is to make yourself play great. If all of these things need to be checked off to play great, and if you have all of these projects and different irons in the fire while you're playing a match, then you can start to see how having a great day of tennis is super, super difficult. And if you, do all of the, if you happen to do all these things well, you might hit with more power, you might hit with more spin. You might be able to hit with some more depth and pressure your opponent more. And so ultimately, these things, just to be really clear, 
these things may lead to you making your opponent uncomfortable. It might result in you pressuring your opponent and making them make mistakes, and that might lead to a win. But here's the thing with Ben. <laughs> here's the thing with most exhausting player. Do you think he's thinking about any of this stuff? Do you, do you think he's concerned about any of these things? And if you've been watching the match play series recently, if any of these things, it's the timing, rhythm, height, speed, spin, the tempo of the match, emotional game, conditions, the, this, is, this is where the mental game comes into play. If any of these things are off, do you think it especially bothers him? If you've watched my sit-down interview with him, if you've listened to his confessional camera footage from when he goes back and talks in the corner, when he's like in trouble, when his opponent is pressuring him, do these things really bother him? Does he ruminate? Does he fixate on the negatives here? Or does he, find, does he try to find a solution? Where's his focus? On the negative stuff, like, oh man, they hit with so much spin. It's so annoying. This isn't real tennis. Or man, they're blowing me out of the water. They're, sitting, they're hitting so hard. This isn't fair. This isn't the right level. I'm not supposed to be playing against this person. Or, oh man, I, I've, I've got this meeting coming up later on tonight that I'm really dreading. Uh, this is really dragging me down emotionally. Or how about I'm playing on clay and I hate playing on clay courts. This is terrible. I don't want to be doing this right now. Ben doesn't get dragged down in any of this stuff. You've, you've heard his responses during the match play. And he doesn't get dragged down in any of this stuff. He doesn't especially care about any of this stuff. And, and Ben, maybe, you know, if I'm wrong, if I'm off base here, Ben, by all means, feel free to, to correct me. Leave a comment, or I'm not sure, I'm not keeping tabs on the chat right now. Uh, but feel free to correct me if I'm, if I'm off base on this. I, I know, like, you work on your game and you're trying to, to improve, but you don't get dragged into focusing on all this stuff like, like so many tennis players do. On the other hand, remember the quote, it's much easier to make your opponent play poorly than it is for you to play great. When you focus on making your opponent play poorly, there's so many different ways you can do that. With height, with spin, with match tempo, with depth, with pace, targeting their weakness, where you position yourself to take away shots, maybe open up other ones that you want them to try to hit or different combinations of all these things. This is what Ben focuses on in his matches. He could care less about self-analyzing his technique. He could care less about the conditions not being in his favor. He could care less about his opponent's style. He focuses in, and hopefully you've heard this. Ho hopefully, you, this is probably resonating with you if you've uh, watched all of our match play with, with Sean and with Topher. Just think about Ben walking up to the camera before a changeover and what he's talking about. He's constantly refocusing on, oh, he, he missed this shot, he missed that shot. It looks like he's uncomfortable with X, Y, or Z. I'm going to start changing up and doing more of this or changing up and doing more of that. Um, he's, he's not going behind me, so I'm going to start positioning myself in a little bit different place. He's always focusing on how he can make his opponent play poorly. He's not super obsessed with focusing on how can I play my best tennis. He's almost exclusively focused on how he can make his opponent play poorly. This is why Ben wins a lot of tennis matches, is because of this mindset. This is where his head is at uh, during matches. So the most exhausting player mantra and I'm extrapolating here. And again, Ben, tell me, if you, of course, tell me if I'm off base. How do I make them as uncomfortable as possible? All Ben's change-ups with the, the different spins, the change-ups with the different depths, the change-ups with the different heights, all of that, is all, it all centers. Maybe Ben hasn't necessarily thought about it this way, but the way when I watch these videos as they, as they play back, what really strikes me is he's just super, super narrowly focused on making his opponents as uncomfortable as possible. And he's skipping all the other stuff. All the other stuff he, he's really not focusing on much at all. And you can hear it as he talks to the camera during the changeovers. Now, kind of a little bit of a disclaimer here. And then I'll do a little bit of Q&A if anybody has any uh, questions. But 
if you're totally into the other stuff, I'm not trying to tell you you're a bad tennis player or you're doing it wrong or you need to start playing like Ben. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying any of those three things. I'm just pointing out why I believe Ben wins a lot of tennis matches. And if you love the technical side of things, if you love nerding out and geeking out about technique and you love trying to perfect your movements and your swing mechanics and your technique, totally fine. I, I to and I get it. Like I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm on the same page there with you. I, I love nerding out and geeking out about swing technique. I was on the court with the ball machine for an hour earlier today. There's a lot of things I'm, you've seen me working on my backhand. So I, I love those things. I enjoy those things. I get a lot of satisfaction out of those things. But I also know that those things won't always result in winning the most matches. And so you have to decide for yourself, do you value more your technical development and, and trying to polish and make your movements and your mechanics as pretty as possible? Does that bring you more happiness and satisfaction? Or is it more getting the W at all costs? And it doesn't matter how pretty it is or, or how you get there. If you get the win, that's what makes you happy. And if you're exactly halfway in between, that's totally fine. That's good. This is all about self-awareness. You need to know yourself here. Ben, obviously, is way over on one end of the spectrum. He doesn't care about the technical stuff. He doesn't care about having a traditional game. He just wants to, you heard him talk in the sit-down interview. He's on a mission. He's got the you know, US Marine Corps mindset. He doesn't care what's in between him and accomplishing that mission. He's going to do what it takes to come out on top, no matter what it is, within the rules, obviously. So that mindset will result in as many wins as possible. If you are on the other end of the spectrum and you just want to do it right and you want to look pretty, that's fine, but don't expect to always win every match. And so it's a balancing act. And sometimes you can have both, but frequently it's one or the other. Does that make sense? I'm trying to just give a little bit of perspective here. You do you at the end of the day, and you can totally mix and match. There's not like a, a right way or a wrong way to tennis. <laughs> you need to decide, are you going to optimize for, for the W, or are you going to optimize for the technical stuff? And it's, it's not necessarily um, completely one or the other. It's not like it's 100% mutually exclusive and it's like only one or the other. But you also can't necessarily focus on both and be successful at both. And so this is why I believe Ben wins so many matches and why he triggers so many tennis players. Because he, he kind of throws out all of the traditional stuff that tennis players tend to focus on, but he still wins lots of matches. And so this creates so much tension and so much friction for tennis players. And you see it. You see it on the internet. You see it in the comments. And, and so this has just kind of been circulating in my mind. I, I wanted to, to do a quick live stream and talk about it. Hopefully this is helpful. It's been a little bit illuminating to you. It's given you a little bit of perspective. And I can't wait to continue sharing all the matches uh, with Ben. I think, frankly, this is a fantastic lesson that we can learn from him. And I hope... I hope it's been helpful. I, ho I hope it's been educational for you. All right, I'll jump into the, the comments here, or the live chat here briefly, and uh, answer questions. But has he reached his plateau? Um, it's possible, Joe, but maybe Ben's totally happy with it. And I, I'm not going to like speculate. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to like answer for Ben. Um, and I think I, I, I asked him, not exactly that question, but we, when we did our sit down interview, I asked him what his plans were. And he said he's not super concerned about doing it the right way, but he'd still like to improve. And so maybe I should have followed up and asked, well, do you want to play 5-0 tennis or are you happy at 4-5? If Ben is happy at 4-5, then in my opinion, God bless him. More, more, if he wants to just hang out at 4-5 and rack up wins, that's totally fine. That's, that's Ben's decision. He, he gets to decide uh, what brings him happiness and fulfillment and what he wants to optimize for. And that's, that's up to Ben. You know, and, and for any of us to tell him that he's doing it wrong or that's not, first of all, he's already reached a level that 90% of tennis players don't reach. 90% of tennis players are 4-0 or below. So for anybody on the internet to, to judge him and tell him that he's doing it wrong is, is kind of ridiculous. I'm not saying you, you're saying that, but I'm sure you see the comments out there. I, I'm sure you see the, the judgment. 
Uh, in, Ben's, in Ben's case, he has the mental advantage against 99% of the competition because he was a Marine. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Trice. Normal people don't get that. Trice, I, Trice, I don't know if you have family in the military. My, my little sister is a Marine Corps veteran, and I went to Paris Island where all the Marines are trained and graduate from boot camp. And I watched her graduate from boot camp, and I was unbelievably inspired by, I don't know, I was there for a day, you know, for eight hours or 10 hours or something like that. It's hard, it's hard to explain the, the, the mentality, the focus, the discipline, the pride in, in how they operate and do every tiny little thing. And it, yeah, I, I totally agree, Michael. That totally comes across in, in Ben's match play. And I agree, it's, it's an advantage against 99% of players. Just on that one, you know, level, the, the mental level, I totally agree. Uh, I want to let you know you hit the jackpot with these match play videos. They're very well done. I appreciate it. Hey, Clay, thank you. Really, really appreciate that very much. Frankly, I feel, I, I love these videos so much. Like the, the video we published today, part two with Topher, it's probably my favorite match play video we've ever published on the channel. It's just an incredible battle between Topher and Ben. Uh, incredible back and forth and yeah I love watching the videos and I uh, loved making them as well Ben's not even wearing a green shirt and he's winning <laughs> mm -hmm. how do I find my own play style um, Henry that's a really good question I would say a uh, like just please record yourself record yourself on video don't don't rely just on feeling and like assumptions about like we all think we hit a shot that must be like Roger Federer. Like when we line up a, a forehand and we hit a winner, it's so easy to just assume that that was just like the best shot ever. And in video, you might be surprised to discover that you actually are much more comfortable and natural at the net. Like it just ran off the top of my head. You just don't know for sure until you see an objective view of yourself and your skills, how you move, how you swing the racket, where you win most of your points. It's very easy for us to assume that we usually win points in one way, but it might be something completely different. So I would say watch yourself, take notes, take notes about uh, where you win most of your points and a, a ratio or percentage. In other words, if you go to the net 10 times and you win eight of those points, and when you're on the baseline, you play 30 points and you only won 10 of them, then that might, might tell you something about like what style might, might suit you best right now. And then the last thing I would say is just keep in mind your temperament as well and kind of your personality. If you're very impatient and uh, um, you know, patience is not something that's strong for you, then being a baseline grinder and like a counter punch or a defensive player, probably not a good decision. So personality, reality, and then just kind of check out your ratios, like how you're, how you're winning points and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, James, how do you feel about Sean's comment that he regrets participating? Oh man, I'm so I'm so torn. Um, I don't want to comment a lot on it, James. Um, to be honest, Sean Sean he didn't have a good experience. You know, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, it was a big struggle for him, and he's still dealing with it. Uh, he's still he's still trying to. He's still trying to deal with it. He's still, he's still trying to process it. I feel really bad. Hopefully it comes across that I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to publish like positivity and support and inspiration. And I'm trying to, to create resources that, that lift people up and build people and give people an ability to reach the next level. I'm not trying to tear people down. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make people feel bad, you know, about themselves. So, so I... I, I I feel, you know, I feel really bad for for Sean's experience. That's not what I wanted to have happen. Uh, that being said, it's in competition, you know, I I've been there, and I think the vast majority have been there. Like we've, most of us have been in a situation where we've had very very negative experiences on the court. I've had very very negative experiences on the court, and um, uh, man, what what was your what was your question? Uh, others think twice. Um, yeah, this is another video I, I like. I want to make. Frankly, like I, 
honor and I respect. We've done 20 matches now on the court with this setup. And I would say that's the exception to the rule. Overall, like there's a reason why Mark Sansett keeps coming back. There's a reason why Scott Brody keeps coming back. The reason why Michael Trice, Cole, uh, so many, like Ira, they keep coming back because um, they love being a part of this. And so in general, that's been my experience with the players coming on this court is they feel like it's a really special thing. They get to be a part of the community. They get to challenge themselves in a unique way that most players never get to challenge, challenge themselves in. And most of the players who've been on this court and done that, like Chris, uh, Chris, who played me, like he's been texting me. He's like, Ian, when, when can I get in? Like, when can I get another match? That's been the feedback that I normally receive uh, from players. And so, but that being said, it's not for everybody. To be totally honest with you, like it's, it's not for everybody. And so I think you just kind of have to know yourself, yourself as a competitor. Um, it's, not the right, it's not the right move uh, for everybody. And um, I, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Uh, I don't want to go into, into it much more, to be totally honest. If I lose 6060 on the Essential Tennis channel, I have the biggest smile on my face. Even, uh, TJ, e even after it gets published to the internet, and like, you got to understand uh, how many people fit in Arthur Ashe Stadium? I think it's about 19,000. You're pretty much guaranteed to have a full Arthur Ashe Stadium watch your match. And so that, that brings a special kind of pressure to it just i mean you get you of course all the people aren't here it's not the same thing as a live audience i'm not trying to say it's the same thing but but in the back of your mind like you you know this and 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 your subconscious is kind of like eh, you know you know it's kind of like poking you and um that's part of what makes this a special you know experience so would you would you still have a huge smile on your face once the match was over if you knew that everybody was going to see this tens of thousands of people? And if the answer is yes, awesome. But I, I think that's something that maybe not everybody really understands about, about being in this situation. And uh, being one of the competitors on this court is there's a special kind of uh, weight, there's a special kind of pressure being in this situation, uh, being in this environment. And most people hate cameras. Uh, most people hate the sound of their own voice, right? Uh, most people hate you know, watching themselves do, do stuff. So you combine all the, like Arthur Ashe, you know, size uh, viewership, having to hear yourself talk, standing in front of a camera and talking to it is super awkward for most people. All, you combine all those things and it's not for everybody. Uh, you know, I'll be totally honest. It's, it's just not, it's not the right play for, for a lot of people. All right, I'll, I'll leave it leave it at that for now. Oh, we got a, a super chat here. Uh, James. Hey, thanks, James. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense, uh, TJ. I hope, uh, it's uh, Mark Sansa. Would you Would you agree with Mark? You, like uh, Mark, Mark's in the chat, and Mike and Trice. Uh, Trice, Michael Trice, Mark Sansa are in the chat. Would you? Uh, you guys have both done college competition. You know, play tournaments. Would would you and don't don't BS me. Don't don't like make stuff up. Uh, would you agree that playing a match here in front of the cameras and the would you agree that it's kind of a special kind of pressure and uh, a, a different kind of experience than what what you've done before? I'm actually I'm curious what Mark uh, Mark and Trice are going to say in the the chat. Um. Chad, I've been there like Sean. Yeah, I, 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 a thousand percent. Like I, I've been exactly in Sean's uh, position. It can be a bad experience, but that's how you learn. Yeah, it, it can be, you know, I, I totally agree. Um, let's see, looking for other. Uh, Mark said, play match at ET, very, very special. <laughs> Mark, I can swing by there in 10 minutes. Who are you, who are you talking to, Mark? I perform with uh, cameras, a nice Taco Bell meal <laughs> in my, my turn. 
Uh, will there be rematches? Yeah, Thomas, um, I 100% I'm going to rematch Mark uh, Sunset. That's on my list. That's on like my short list. Uh, Ira and Mark. I, I want I want to play Ira again, and I want to play Mark again. Uh, those are the two rematches. I, I really I really I feel like I kind of have something to prove against both of them, to be totally honest. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of like just in my head, and it's going to be on the calendar down the road. It's something that I, I want to challenge myself in that way by seeing how I did, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, and, and pushing myself to do better. You know, whether or not I win, who knows? I, I, you can never predict the outcomes of, of matches, but I want to prove that I'm better now than I was six months or eight months ago. And so I, I definitely look forward to that rematch. Uh, I know uh, Mark uh, Sanset and Scott Brody are going to do a rematch for sure. And... Aside from that, I'm not sure. We'll have other, we'll have other rematches too. The camera lens is literally a window to the hundreds of thousands of views judging me every single minute. <laughs> from uh, from Mark Sansa, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Michael Trice, it was very different. I love the challenge the cameras provide and the pressure I feel from them. Also, tr awesome Trice. Ian, you have a way to work on playing through stress other than matches. Ian, you have a way to work playing through stress. Um, sorry, Migs, I'm not really following. Um, I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm always work in progress, you know, being a better competitor. I, I feel personally that where I'm at right now is just astronomically better. I, I'm so, frankly, I'm so relieved that I'm, I'm competing as well as I am. Um, Compared to when I was in college, I was a, I was a, um, I was an emotional, like mental train wreck in college, towards the end of uh, college, and to be honest, I'm just really happy that I'm not doing that now, <laughs> with all that. Like I didn't know, honestly, frankly, I didn't know if all of that negativity was going to come back, and uh, I'm not saying I, I've been like sunshine and rainbows the whole time when I'm playing matches, but there was a part of me that was afraid that that I was going to start challenging myself and pushing myself with all the cameras on and I was going to start, you know, throwing my racket and, and bouncing it and yelling at myself and being super negative and, and having to like apologize for my behavior on the court. And honestly, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy with how I've done. Now that being said, there's always improvements that can be made. Um, that there's always additional steps that, that you can take to get better and better. And I, I'm going to keep doing that for sure. Any thoughts on doing some behind the scenes videos on these matches? Um, yeah, that's tough. Maybe in the future. It's so much, it's hard to explain how much work it is to get the, the match play videos out there. We're not, honestly, like, especially with new players, when new players come in, like, we're not, we're not trying to, like, point a camera in their face, like, the whole time and make, make it super awkward we're trying to cultivate kind of a chill atmosphere here at the courts until the match starts. And then obviously there's a lot of pressure, but um, we're not filming behind the scenes stuff. Like we're not, we're not like constantly pointing a camera in the face <clears throat> of the players here on purpose. Like I, I want people to feel comfortable when they walk in here and not feel super awkward. So uh, maybe in the future we'll do behind the scenes stuff, but it, we haven't been shooting for that up until this point. Uh, Try it's one of the best experiences I've had on a tennis court. I love the pressure the cameras provide. It's an amazing experience. Nice. Thanks. Uh, appreciate you saying that, Michael. Uh, glad you've enjoyed it. I, I mean, I love it too. It feels special to me every time. Every time I play somebody out there, it feels like a special uh, experience for me. I, I really, I really love it. Uh, ET Universe tournament. Yeah, that'll definitely happen eventually. How about playing in bunny costumes? I, I, I guess. I can't imagine I would get more views. <laughs> it's probably, it'd probably be less views, but you never know. How about a match with uh, Nick from Intuitive Tennis? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be down for, for doing a collaboration with uh, Nicola, right? Uh, does he go by Nick? Sorry. Um, yeah, I would t yeah, I would totally, I would totally do a match with, with Nick. I, I think he does a, an awesome job. All right, just a couple more here. I, ne I need to sign off soon. How exactly long is your tennis hit list? <laughs> like people I, I want to play? 
Uh, Mark and Ira are the only two people on it right now. Like I, I definitely, I'm not actively training for that right now. We've had, we've had so much in the pipeline that I've had to manage. I, I've kind of fallen off with my training. I hit today, which I feel really good about, but um, I'm not, I, I've kind of fallen off since, uh, since playing Ben. Uh, Ira, I would say Ira and Mark are the only two on my hit list right now. But I'm not actively training for that at the moment. But hopefully, I'm about to go to California for two weeks of coaching. And hopefully when I come back from that, I'll kind of get back on the training uh, train again. All right, I'm going to answer two more and then I'm done. Um, even though MVP has handled all this so gracious, graciously and with humor, I'm willing to bet... He's over it and ready to get back to just being Ben. You know what? Honestly, like I text with Ben most days since uh, the, the video started coming out. To be honest, I think he's enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, oh, hey, hey, there's Ben. <laughs> I, I, ben, why don't, why don't you answer? I'm not going to speculate. Are you ready for all this attention to be done with? Or are you enjoying the, are you enjoying the ride? Like, uh, are, are you looking forward to not having to watch these videos or... Or worry about the comments and all that stuff, or, or are you are you enjoying being in the middle of it? And it's it's been fun. I'm actually I'm curious to hear Ben's uh, Ben's answer to that. Um, the quality of the editing and filming is chef's kiss. <laughs> nice, Sandra. Uh, thanks, Sandra. Appreciate that. the The whole team has has done an incredible job. I, I completely agree. I wish I could take credit for the editing. I definitely I, I have input here and there, but the uh, in particular James and Tyler, they're the only ones doing match cuts right now. They're doing they're killing it. They're doing an incredible job. I, I totally totally agree. They're they're absolutely killing it. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for Ben's uh, response to that question before I sign off. Uh, would you like to be a guest speaker at my tennis club, San Francisco State? Um, Wesley, I do like. A, I would be happy to do like a Zoom, uh, Zoom call if that's cool. I don't have any plans on being in San Francisco. Uh, I'm going to be in the LA area when I'm on my and I'm 100%. I I don't. I maybe have two hours of free time. To, I got when I travel and I go coach. It's like blocked, like solid. If I'm going to leave like this and I'm going to leave my family, like it's it's just 100% uh, booked out. So. Uh, all right, so Ben said, I'm enjoying it as long as people still want to see it and that the overall sentiment remains positive. Okay, cool. Yeah, a little bit of uh, controversy today over Ben's uh, call, the, uh, the line call. I feel like I got to know Ben pretty well in the time he was here. And my, like, my personal opinion on the line call is I'm confident in saying that Every tennis player I've ever played against has probably made an incorrect call against me. And every player I've ever played against, I've probably made an incorrect call back towards them. You know, in one way or the other, been, been wrong in one way or the other. It, it's just part of tennis. It's, it's part of amateur tennis. Without Hawkeye, without line judges, without chair umpire, it's, it's just a normal, natural part of the game. Making a malicious call on purpose knowingly hooking somebody like that's that's cheating like ho hooking somebody knowingly and making an honest mistake are two completely different things making an honest mistake happens every amateur tennis match uh, hooking somebody maliciously does not happen every amateur tennis match so um, Ben uh, you know nobody asked Ben to apologize to Topher in the comments below today's video but he did and that, along with how I feel like I've, I've gotten to know Ben, his trip here and, you know, subsequent conversations, there's no doubt in my mind it was an honest mistake, and that happens in every match. So, you know, anybody that wants to judge Ben over that one call has probably never watched themselves make line calls on video before, and they don't, under, they don't know how many times they've gotten a call wrong themselves. It, it's a normal part. You, you just can't be right every time. It, it's just the way it is. So it's a, it's, a, it's a normal part of amateur tennis competition. All right, guys. All right, I'm going to sign off. Um, I've got some things to wrap up before I head home today. 
Thank you all so much. If you enjoyed the, the insights here on the stream, it would mean a lot to me if you click the like button. That's all I'm asking. This is all free, guys. Like we're not charging. We're not charging for the match play. We're not charging for the lessons. We're not charging for the for the, the analysis. So if you if you appreciate it and if you've enjoyed it and if the match play series has been helpful and if the breakdowns and like the analysis live streams that I've been doing have been helpful, if they're helping you play better tennis, if you would just click the like button when we post videos, it, it really means a lot. And it actually does help. Like it's it's not just some vanity thing like the the algorithm the more engagement there is the more likes there are the more tennis players get to see these videos so thanks for doing it i appreciate it i know it gets tiresome you know all the youtubers are always asking you to do it but it really does help uh ben thanks so much for for being a part of all these videos appreciate it thanks for showing up in these live streams it's been really cool to see you participate and show up i have i've never asked ben to be in these live streams like he's just shown up because he, he enjoys participating and, and being a part of the, the conversation. So, uh, Ben, you're a great guy. Thanks for being a part of it. All right. I got to head out. Thanks, everybody. Take care.